good afternoon and month welcome to our monthly Deleme Tips and Tricks webinar. My name is Alex and today we'll be discussing Kibana reporting in Deleme ES6. If you're new to our GoToWebinar series, a few notes on the controls. First, there is a zoom button in the upper left hand corner of the screen, or actually I think in the current version now it's in the center. Uh, we got to update the screenshot in the slide deck. Uh, that will allow you to control the scaling of my screen if it displays too largely or too small. Uh, there is also in the control panel a Q&A area where you can type any questions you might have. Uh, if anything particularly pertinent pops up, I may pause to address it, but otherwise we'll do a, a full Q&A at the end. Uh, as mentioned, this is part of our monthly Deleem series of tips and tricks webinars. We usually do them the third Wednesday of each month. Uh, this month we're doing it the fourth. Uh, typically, as soon as we know what we're going to be doing the next month, we put that up on blanchardsystems.com slash events. I've also been trying to put them on our Zendesk as well and the main portal when you log in, so be sure to keep an eye out there. As mentioned, we're going to be talking about uh, Kibana visualization with ES, so we're going to go over uh, this is really, we did, when Deleems first started using Elasticsearch and Kibana and bu building them into their ES installs about five or six years ago, uh, we did a webinar, I think, in mid-2016. And uh, I was, we were looking at that recently, and a lot of the info in there is good as far as an introductory webinar, but uh, uh, the Kibana interface has changed a lot in the past five years. So this is mostly an intro webinar if you've never really played around with Kibana or visualizations. Uh, we're going to go over all the basics of how to configure your Kibana setup within ES. Uh, we're going to talk about a basic overview of the interface and how to navigate around, uh, how to create visualizations and dashboards to show your data or analyze info from either logs or files that you have in ES uh, to gain some sort of insight into your process. I will then talk about how to integrate those dashboards into ES. And then for the last bit, I'm going to um, talk about a few new features in Kibana 6 and 7 uh, that are new in uh, ES6. Uh, before we go a bit further, some more notes on a uh, scope. Uh, first off, especially if anyone's finding the recording of this on YouTube later on, terminology gets really messy here because we're dealing with two different products that are completely unrelated that are both abbreviated to ES. And those are Deleme ES and uh, Elasticsearch also gets abbreviated to that uh, in some circles. Uh, since this is targeted towards the Deleme audience, whenever I say ES, I'm going to be referring to Deleme ES. And uh, if I mean to talk about Elasticsearch, then I'll refer to Elasticsearch by its full name. Uh, next, I'm going to skip all the fun technical details involved. Uh, I'm going to be showing particularly Elasticsearch 7, which is the newest version that will run with ES6 uh, if you're running the latest patches. Uh, there are some hoops involved in getting that set up. Uh, theoretically, at some point when I get a slow day, I have to go through and uh, record a uh, video showing you all the hoops you have to jump through just so you have something to go off. Uh, if you're planning an ES6 upgrade before that, open a ticket and I can walk you through the details. Um, I am going to be showing Kibana 7, as I mentioned. Uh, ES6 ships with Kibana 6 out of the box. Uh, but you can upgrade it to Kibana 7. Most of the features I'm going to be focusing on are old features uh, that will work in both Kibana 6 and 7. Uh, if I'm showing anything specific to 7, I'm probably going to label it as such so that you know, and we'll cover those more towards the end. There are also a few really cool things I'm going to show that I can't really go into depth on for an introductory webinar just because the setup for some of these new features is so different from how all the old core functionality works that uh, I don't want to muddy the waters here, so uh, I'll show them and I'll do a bit of a teaser and uh, I can point you to some, some uh, resources where you can get more info if you're interested. So first off, why does ES include Kibana? What this really goes back to was uh, ES always has in the search screen an area where you can search. So you type in a term and uh, it helps if I search for something that actually exists on my system. Um, but you've got an area where you can search for documents, projects, customers, anything of that ilk. And uh, historically, back when ES, from I think ES1 to ES4.5, they used to use a search engine under the hood called Apache Lucene. About five years ago, they switched over to a new search engine called Elasticsearch. Uh, and Elasticsearch 
aside from the technical reasons there, uh, as part of that search, they got access to, there's another application developed by the same company that makes Elasticsearch, which is called Kibana. Uh, and uh, where Elasticsearch is really the storage where ES can put records of everything you have in the system, Kibana is a way that you can also then take that info that already exists for a practical purpose, in this case search, and then use that to analyze that or use that or visualize that in some way so that you can gain more understanding about your production process or your data in some way. Uh, so when Deleem made the shift to use Elasticsearch for search, they decided to bundle in Kibana because they thought it would be useful for reporting. Uh, now, as far as uh, versions, uh, what you see when you go to look at um, Kibana on your system is going to look a little different depending on which version of ES you're running right now. Most of what I'm showing should be relevant depending on no matter which version you have, but the screen's going to look a little different. Uh, if you've got ES 5.0, you're going to have Kibana 4, which would look like this. Uh, ES 5.5 shipped with Kibana 5, which looks like this. You can run that on uh, ES 5.0 as well. Uh, Deleem is very particular about versions here just because the Kibana, the Elasticsearch API that they use to interact with it changes so much in some of these versions. Uh, so ES 5.0 can run both Kibana 4 and 5, but it can't run 6 or 7. And then we've got uh, Kibana 6, which ships with ES 6, and uh, Kibana 7, which doesn't ship with ES 6, but which will run with it, uh, provided you're on a current patch set. Uh, as far as uh, interface, the functionality, the operation is fairly similar. The UI is just going to look a little different depending on where you're, uh, which version you're using. Uh, and for example, in Kibana 5, your navigation's at the top bar here, and 5, 6, and 7, it's going to be on the side. Uh, the, the names of the terms are pretty much the same from there, and the rest of the interface hasn't changed too much. So uh, within that, ES data is organized into what two indexes or two indices within Elasticsearch, uh, the object index and the log index. Uh, and the object index was the core store of data that Deleem put in so that they could support the search in here. So it's tailored to just what Deleem needed to get this search running. So it contains info on documents, customers, projects, and it's all the info that you would look for in search. So it's the location of a file, the file name, what project it's in, what size it is, what metadata it has associated with it. Uh, it's very purpose-built for that function. Uh, so a lot of the, when you see, when we dig in, a lot of the information you'll see in there is related to that. It's basically one record per file. So if you've got a file in here, you're gonna have one record in that index with all the information for that file. Uh, the other index is the log index. And what this is, is uh, when you have ES, the event log, if we were gonna go over to uh, here, and you see the record of, uh, I think I can search for everything in here. So this would just be the record of events that uh, have occurred on your ES system. So if, uh, for example, I'm searching for something or someone tried to log into the system and they couldn't get in or uh, something happened in a workflow. It's just a loose dump of all the events that have happened for every file and customer and project and job on the system. Uh, and that was, again, this wasn't, as you'll see later, there are some shortcomings. This is really an approach where they had existing info at, that they could give you for purposes of visualization. So they just forklifted the existing setup over into Elasticsearch so you could use it in Kibana. Uh, we'll get into a few of the shortcomings later, but that's what we're mainly going to be dealing with. So as far as using this in ES, uh, I'm on my ES system here. If you wanted to play with Kibana on your system, uh, the place to start is to go to the Admin tab, uh, System Tools, and Statistics. And that'll bring up this screen here. And you might see on a new install, if you've never played with this before, sometimes you'll see a strange error in here, like it's like a 404 or something. Instead of actually loading something in here, it'll load nothing. Uh, we've seen it as a bug on new installs. T typically what you have to do in here is then click this uh, dashboard drop down, 
and select where it says ES Live dashboard, and that'll get things running. Uh, but we can see here we've got info, just basically visualizations I was testing earlier that uh, show me things I have in my ES. Uh, if I want to actually go in and edit these or deal with Kibana directly, I can click the Kibana configuration button here to uh, bring Kibana up in a new tab. Uh, you can also go directly to this path here, this sand, this your server, spree, private ES report. Uh, if you go to that path, you'll have to log into ES, and then that will redirect you to Kibana. And then from here, we get our uh, Kibana homepage where we can uh, look at what we have in the system. Uh, if you've never played with this before, the first thing you're going to have to do before you can do anything else is you're going to have to set up index patterns so that you can tell Kibana what data you want it to look at in Elasticsearch. Uh, that's done in the uh, left-hand pane under Management. And here in version 7, it would be stack management. I think the name is like setup or something a little different on uh, older versions. Uh, and then from within there, there is an option called index patterns. And we're going to go in there. And what this does is when you have indexes in your Elasticsearch, we have the two that Deleem made that they mentioned that I mentioned a little bit ago, uh, you have to tell Kibana which you want to make available for visualizations. Uh, and uh, I've both of mine in here. If you were coming in a new, new install, this wouldn't exist. So I'm actually going to delete that and recreate that so you can see what it looks like. Uh, so and typically, if you had a new install of ES with uh, nothing set up on it, you would uh, come in and you would see just the ES log index in here. Uh, the next one you would have to create is the object index. Uh, ES has this created and uses it for search. You just have to make it available to Kibana. Uh, and you would do that by clicking Create Index Pattern here. And it'll show you all the indexes it sees in your Elasticsearch that you can pull data from. I have a few extras for some fancy things I'm going to be showing later on. But uh, I can take any of these and uh, type in the name. So here we'll do ES Gleam Log, actually object index. One of the reasons you have to set this up, is, one of the reasons why you would want to set it up this way is something that doesn't really apply to Deleem. Uh, for some of the other indexes here, I've got some of these other things pushing data into mine. It, things that generate a little lot more data than ES does, uh, the standard practice is to split them into separate indexes per day or month. Uh, so the idea there would be you could say that, for example, this file beat, I could say I want to create a pattern that matches any index that has file beat in the name, and then use that as my, uh, as my, uh, index pattern and then use info from both of those indexes that it matched here in that uh, visualization. Uh, ES doesn't use make use of that, so you can just type in a straight uh, name without any kind of wildcards in here. Uh, that matches one index here, which is good. Uh, the next thing we have to do is, since a lot of the graphs and visualizations we'd be dealing with are time-based, all the events we have in ES, so log events or file uploads, they're all rooted in time. If you want to make use of that in visualizations or searching, you need to tell it what counts as your overall time field for when things happened. Uh, for the object index, that's just this COBJ creation date here. So I'm going to go ahead and click uh, Create an Index Pattern. And the next thing we would do from there is, if we want to see what we have in there, we can go to Discover. And this is really where if you're starting to play around with Kibana and you want to see what you have available, uh, this is one of the best places to get started. So I'm in my log index right now. And I can see that uh, I have a whole bunch of records in here, a whole bunch of information. Uh, I can choose how much information I see based off a date range to limit what results come back. Uh, right now I'm searching for anything from today. Um, you could also have uh, filters. You could say you want to see everything from, for example, the last seven days. Or you could even give uh, absolute time periods if you want to uh, choose something from a very specific day. You could say, I want to see all events that happened uh, on April 1st, for example. Uh, that becomes important because if you've had this running on your system for months or years, uh, you might have millions of events logged in here, and uh, it can lead to slow loading on this screen, and uh, uh, it can also impact 
the visualizations. You might want your visualizations later to only show info from the past week or year or month, uh, because if you're graphing like a pie chart breakdown or something, the actual breakdown of that pie chart can depend on the, the amount of data you're feeding into it and what's in that data. And you might not care about statistics from five years ago. But I can see I have all my entries here. If I click this little carrot, I can actually see what's in there. So, for example, I'm in the event log right now, so this is just showing me events that have happened on my ES system. And I can see things associated with them, so I can see the organization the event was associated with was my main org. I can see it was associated with the admin user. The operation was, the event that happened was a search. Uh, and I can see uh, other things about uh, when it started. And if I want to take any of these, I can uh, click the uh, button here to show that in uh, this table so that I can browse through a little easier without seeing that whole wall of information we saw earlier. So I can see that my uh, login is admin, the operation that happened was search. I can toggle that in the table as well. And uh, the text of it too. So I can see that that was a search for star. There was a search for music, which returned nothing. I can see an operation that was my login. There were a few other invalid uh, logins for someone named Jethro earlier. Uh, and I can just see everything that's been going on in the system. And if I were to upload a new page into my ES, which I guess I'll pop into uh, one of these jobs and just push a uh, new page in. If we go back and we uh, refresh this, once my page uh, pops in here, we should start seeing new entries in here for uh, my page once it gets through its workflow here. I can hear my laptop's fan going on, which is not a... Uh, Good sign for my, uh, oh, that's what I did. I think I had a time, uh, okay, that's where I'm going wrong. The last seven days, yep. I had my time filter messed up from there. So I can see here that I have uh, a whole bunch of new events just came in that are all these events related to the workflow that ran. So most of these are just like metadata changes on uh, different fields that in my file that happened as it ran through the workflow. I can see one for the initial ingestion. If I were to go ahead and, for example, reject this file, I should get a new event in here as well. So pre-press approval. Yep, there was a reject in there. If I want to, in addition to that, I can also go in to filter for any of these values. So if I wanted to see anything related to pre-press approval, I could click this button to start a filter here, and it's going to show me all pre-press approvals, events that happened on my system in the last uh, seven days, so I can get a, a good view of what happened. You can also type that in up here if you don't want to have to go through and click those buttons. I could just type in here operation, put a colon, and uh, pre-press approval. And I could search that way as well. If I wanted to do this another way too, I could also go in and uh, you can also filter based on whether a field is present, uh, even if you uh, don't care about the specific value. So if I wanted to search for everything related to documents, I could filter on the field present for document name. So it's only going to return entries that have something to do with the document name, regardless of which document it is. Or if I want to look for a specific file, I could filter on my document ID here and say I want to find anything related to this specific page, and that's going to show me the whole history of this file within uh, my ES. Now, 
Uh, and this is mainly, this could be useful if you're trying to find info and you don't want to fight with the event log in ES or uh, it can also be useful for purposes of visualizations as we'll see. Uh, one other thing, but if you find a good search in here, you get this set up, you have all the columns listed out the way you want them to be. Uh, you can go ahead and you can save that as a, uh, actually what I'll do is I should probably make that something a little more uh, generic. So I'll make that pre-press approval. I'll filter for anything that has uh, that value. You can also filter out, so you can say you want results that aren't a document, for example, and do the inverse of this filter. But here we'll do, we'll, we want to search for pre-press approvals. And then if you come back into your uh, system later on, like maybe if I toggle between uh, my indexes real quick. I can go then and I can open that save search and recall that. Pre-press approvals. Unless I save that wrong or something. Now, the one other thing you can do in here that's new in uh, Kibana 6 and 7 that's kind of nice is, uh, let me uh, toggle a few of these columns back on. If you get some info you like in here and you save that, then uh, let's do this. Uh, you can also share it by exporting to a, a CSV. So if you want to build a really quick report and uh, Go to my downloads folder. I can download that as a uh, basically a spreadsheet and then uh, bring that into Excel and then if I want to use that as a spreadsheet for something or if someone in management wants information, uh, that's a very easy way to export that uh, data. It wasn't possible to do that in some of the older versions, so I figured I'd mention it. So now. I'll, I'll show you the, the object index too real quick. So the object, the log index we're looking at before was all the events that happened on my system. The object index here is going to show me, it's basically what ES needs to run the search screen. So that's going to show me basic info about the file name, um, file format, file size. Uh, there's a lot of metadata in here too. If I have any custom metadata associated with my own process, that can show up here as long as it's enabled as searchable in ES, which we'll cover later. So you can see here that my, here's some custom metadata I did to flag, for example, whether or not this file had a preflight error when it went through my twist server. Um, and you can do the same things here if you want to filter by uh, set up your uh, columns to have a, uh, object name and uh, where was the type? I think that's down. Uh, so, so you could do a uh, filter by, for example, type that equals, uh, and it actually gives me my values here. As I can say, I want to search for anything where type is job and have it uh, filter down to that. So I think next we'll get into the visualizations. Uh, there are a few caveats with this approach, which I think would be good to mention. Because uh, as I mentioned, these two indexes are really things of either necessity or convenience. Uh, the object index is here because ES needs it for search. The log index is here because Deleem had that info easily available. It was already set up for the event log. All they had to do was push it over into Elasticsearch. Uh, this can run into some, you can run into some challenges with this uh, because these both contain different bits of information and there isn't really a good way to query information from both of them and join them together like you might if you've played around with uh, databases before. And this comes down to a bit of a technical question or explanation about uh, 
Elasticsearch and how data is stored. Uh, in, a, in a relational database where, for example, when ES is storing this info for its own use, um, it's stored with the goal of uh, deduplication or normalization. Uh, when you're running an application like ES, you want information to be stored in only one place, so it's easier to change if it needs to be updated later on. So for example, in the ES database under the hood, you'd have, in the database, you'd have a table where it stores all the info on all the pages in the system, and you'd have a separate table where it stores all the info on all the jobs in the system. Uh, and the page would have the page info, page name stored in it, and it would have a link to the job record in the jobs table in the database. Uh, and then that's where the job name would be stored, so that that job name would only be stored once in the system. Uh, that way, if, for example, you rename the project, the ES wouldn't have to go through and rename it in 500 pages. Um, Elasticsearch, on the other hand, since this does reporting, but search was its core development purpose, uh, it goes for what they call denormalized data, or I guess, um, yeah, denormalized data would be the way, or duplicated data here, uh, where it kind of unfolds that, because uh, the goal is you it wants to have info quickly searchable, and in, in a uh, form where it doesn't have to worry about all these sort of joins and managing relationships. So, uh, in Elasticsearch, as we could see here, it's you have one record per file, and each of those has the uh, project name and, uh, for example, directly written in there. Um, and there's no real way to join up those records that you would in a database. Uh, and where this comes into play is with the object index and log index, uh, there's no way to combine info from both of those in one visualization or one search. Uh, the log indexes are related to a single event, not to a file. Uh, they're permanent even if a file is deleted because they just reference a log entry. Uh, so, for example, if you reject a file and then you delete it from ES, the record of that rejection is going to stay preserved in Elasticsearch and Kibana. Uh Whereas with the object index, that's what ES uses for search. So, uh, if you delete an item out of ES, it no longer needs to find it in search. That's not going to exist in here. Uh, that's not going to show up and be available to use for visualizations. Uh, where this is important is, I'm trying to think of one real world example I remember is we had a customer a while ago. They were trying to look for, I think it was something like all files, they wanted to count revisions for all files with a certain piece of metadata or something like that. And the info exists in here. Uh, the When you'd see a new revision come in to ES, that would get logged in the log index, you'd see a file ingested event. Uh, the problem is the metadata would be in the object index, and there's no way to combine those two indices to do a joint query. Uh, and the problem with the, ob so the problem there was the log index would show you all those events, but it might not show you, you couldn't find the metadata. And the object index would only show you revisions that existed for current files. Uh, because revisions were associated with the record for that file. And if you uploaded a file and then you deleted it later on, it wouldn't have any record of those revisions in there. So, might have gone a little overboard on that, but I hope that makes sense. Let's see. We actually have a question. Uh, well, the question, does that mean that the object index can offer current snapshot, but not an accurate history? Uh, that's correct. Because this is basically its current snapshot of everything that ES needs for search. Deleen built it with search in mind uh, for their own purposes. So it is an it is an up-to-date snapshot of that information. Uh, the log index is historical data on specific events, but you don't have all the same nuance on file metadata, for example. Uh, it's one of those things where it's basically just information that we had available from different sources, but these indices weren't really tailor built to be optimal for building visualizations. Uh, we can talk a little later about there's ways you can kind of cheat your way around that if there's something you really want to do. Um, but I think I'll show you a little visualizations first and then we can discuss that from there. So for visualizations, we have our uh, info here and we've talked enough about all the things I have in my database. 
The next step would be to actually create a visualization. So what we'll do from here is uh, I'll go in here and click Create Visualization. It's going to give me a list of different types of visualizations I can create. Uh, perhaps the simplest one to start with as a metric is the simplest. Uh, it's going to ask me where I want to search for data for this visualization. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select, uh, I think maybe I'll do my object index here. And right now what it's doing is my search in my object index resulted in, it returned 137 objects in my ES system here, which we have a number that's not a particularly useful number for our purposes. Uh, so what we can do in here is we can change what it's looking at. Uh, right now it's just doing a count of results turned by my search. If I wanted to search, for example, and say uh, type is uh, page order, I can uh, update this and I'll see that 125 of those objects are pages. Or if I do job, I have nine jobs in my ES system. So I can filter it there. Uh, you can also recall the save search here if you want as well to use that in a visualization. There's a little icon here where you could uh, load one. In this particular case, maybe I just want everything on the system. I don't care what it is. Uh, I can then also do some kind of aggregation here, some kind of calculation on that result. Uh, so right now I'm just doing a count of the number of results. I could also do, for example, maybe I want to do a sum. And I can select here from within my index, from my fields, uh, what I want to do a sum of. So maybe here I'll do file size. And that gives me, I guess that's in bytes the number of bytes that I have total in my system and all my files, uh, which that's not a very useful kind of format. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to my uh, stack management. Uh, this is where the index patterns that I was explaining earlier come into play a little is uh, the indexes actually exist in Elasticsearch, but Kibana needs its own record one so that you can group multiple indices together in a search if you want but also so you can control how they're displayed. So here, this I can search, I can see my field is ESPO file size. I can click this edit here to change details. I can see that this is a number. I have control over how that's, uh, that number is displayed. Uh, so it could be, for example, a percentage. In this particular case, it's bytes, so I'm gonna change this to bytes so that it treats it as a file size and formats it accordingly. If I go ahead and click Save Field, then uh, if I go back to my Visualize, Visualize tab here, I can see that it shows I have uh, 94 megabytes of files on my dev system right now. If I wanted to change this aggregation, I could also do, diff there's different types of calculations. So rather than a sum, maybe if I wanted to do average, I could uh, calculate the average of that file size. And you'll see now my average is 700 kilobytes. And if I get a visualization there that I'm happy with, uh, I can hit save. Now this is where one thing that comes to play here too is these dates that we were talking about earlier. Uh, this is going to change depending on what period you look at. Actually, maybe a better example here would, would really be the sum for this one. I'm going to change that back to a sum file size. I'll save that as uh, total file size. And I can actually put a label in here if I wanted to, because if you're showing a visualization to a user, they're not going to care what ESPO file size means. They're going to know disk space used or something like that. But uh, this is in the last seven days because it's I'm only looking at data from the time frame selected here. So if I wanted to change this, I could say that uh, I wanted to do everything from the past year. And if I update it then, I get 98 megabytes. And if I really change it to just uh, last, uh, you'll do uh, last two out, three hours, then I only use 10.8 megabytes of disk space during that time frame. So the period you're looking at can have an impact on the visualizations, uh, what data they show. So that's a fairly simple visualization. I'm going to save this again because I'm pretty happy with this. 
I'm just going to go through a few examples of uh, different other types of visualizations I've been playing around with here. So if I make, uh, I think next maybe I'll do a uh, bar chart, vertical bar. And I'm going to do uh, object index again. And right now I get a count. So it's counting the number of uh, everything returned on my uh, job. And so what I'll do is in here is, uh, first off, I'll make this uh, type is uh, page order. We only care about pages in this instance. And actually, I'll change this to uh, last uh, seven days. OK, that looks good to me. So the next step then is we want to break this up a little more. So what we'll do here is we'll add a uh, bucket here. And we'll split the x-axis. And we're going to split that off your different choices about what you can choose to split on. What we're going to do here is we're going to split on what we call a term aggregation. And what this is going to do is for text metadata that we have in Elasticsearch, it's going to split that apart and uh, let us uh, use that to filter on. So if I use that, I can split and I can see that uh, number of files uploaded to my ES based on the project they were uploading to. Or actually there, maybe I should do uh, ESPO customer name might be a better, uh, my keyboard. Uh, there we go. Now this is one thing in here to watch out for in the object index in particular, one quirk of the way Deleem has it set up. Uh, Deleem's writing this as metadata, it's basically because that's how they store it within ES. And uh, they have different metadata fields for information that's stored with the page, and for example, information that's stored with the project. So if you're dealing with pages here, you'd want to select ESPO for ES page order rather than ES job, or else you're not going to get any results. If I do, uh, you don't have to worry about that on the log index because the setup is a little simpler there. So I've got my four customers here. Paycheck Collectors Monthly, New Orleans Widget Company, and I can see how many pages each of them uploaded within the last seven days. Um, and I actually want to make this terms a little larger. Uh, what they tend to do by default is they assume you're dealing with a massive amount of data, and they tend to limit it to only show like the key, like the top five customers, for example. So I tend to put like a really large number in here just to keep it uh, showing all my results. It's something you need to watch out for. I'll add a label in here. Customer name, update. Uh, we'll actually make that files. Files uploaded, and that looks good too. Now we can split this even further if we want to. So we go in here, we could split series. Uh, if we do that, we can do another terms aggregation and say we want to show file breakdowns per customer within that. And then we could go and show uh, ESPO, ESPO job name. If we update now that we can see that uh, I still have my results by customer, but now they're subdivided into results by uh, particular, uh, actually I should give that a label so that shows uh, pretty too, job name. So you can see now that uh, 26 uh, files in this, uh, 22 in that one. I can see a little more breakdown there. You also have in these other two tabs, you have some controls over, for example, where the uh, legend shows up and uh, if you want to show actually values in the chart. So you've got some control over how these things display. Uh, if you've got it set up the way you like it, I'll go ahead and save it. And, uh, up. I got a whole bunch more examples I'm probably going to run out of time for. I'm going to try and hit as many as I can. So one other one in here I'll do, maybe a pie chart next. 
I just want to show a few different examples of what the data in these indexes looks like. Uh, so, for example, we do a pie chart. So let's do this again with the object index. And let's do one to show us how many, uh, we'll do a sum of file size again. If we click update, we can see that we've got uh, our sum now. We've got uh, our 94 megs of files. Uh, if we want to break that down into, we could do the same thing we just did and split the slices by, for example, customer by doing the uh, terms aggregation and then choosing uh, customer name. But uh, if we want to get even fancier, what we could do is we could uh, go in here and uh, we'll actually split the chart. And what we'll do here is uh, terms. We'll do a customer name. I'll set that something really large. And now we get a separate pie chart for each customer. Within that, then we can uh, further break this down to, into slices based on, for example, job name. So do terms again. I'll do uh, use PO job name update. And now we can see which jobs are uh, show labels. I can see which jobs within each of these customers are using up space and what percentage of that space. So you can even break that down more if you wanted to do, for example, another layer. You could split the splices further and say you wanted to, for example, uh, split based off of uh, MIME category, which is file type. Let's see, For labels, I don't want to show top level only. So I can see that uh, I can see, for example, here, which percentage of files in these jobs are taking up space, too. So which percentage is, for example, TIFFs versus PDFs, if I want to split this even further. So I'll save that. Now, one other thing, too, if you're dealing with really complex data like this, you can do a uh, data table. Uh, this is one good example we built uh, to help out a customer recently is a lot for the log index. Uh, we had a customer where if you don't know an ES, if you type your password wrong, I think five or six times in a row, it'll actually go in and disable the uh, login allowed on your account. So if you go in here and uh, so I'll go in here and uh, I guess I never set up this particular user. Let's give him uh, whatever. Uh, yep. If you type the wrong password on the login screen six times or so, I think it is, um, ES will assume that someone's trying to hack into your account and disable the login. Uh, and usually when that happens, you'll see the login allowed unchecked, and then the user won't be able to get into ES, um, which that's something we've had issues with in the past where someone does that, they don't realize they did that. Uh, and then you get a ticket saying, hey, why can't I log into my account? Uh, one thing you can do is whenever that happens, uh, in the log index, there is an operation that gets recorded uh, called invalid login. And if I update that, I can see I've had five invalid logins in my ES in the past uh, seven days. Uh, if I add a bucket in here, I can split the rows of that table by terms. And we'll make the field, uh, actually, this login. Yep. So, oh, should we? Yep, that looks good. So, invalid login. If I were to go, let me show up with a new private window here. I'll sneak over to my ES server. They should have in here. Uh, unless I'm uh, filtering on something wrong here. I should have more results than that. Yeah, you can see here if I log in, try to log in with test.
that number should keep going up. Yep. So let me uh, count those good buckets, add split rows. It might be user if I'm getting it wrong. So terms. Let me actually check real quick because I might have the wrong uh, field name there. So operation is availed login. Okay, it's user. That's what I'm doing wrong. So I have the wrong field here. So it's. Uh, is that actually it? Yeah, user is test. Okay, user dot keyword. There we go. Now we can see all you our users that were having trouble logging in in the past seven days. And if you wanted to break that down even further, you could uh, add a uh, one more of these splits, and you could do, for example, maybe like a date histogram based on the start time field, and then that would show you. Uh, for however many hours uh, everyone had, a, each of these users had a uh, bad login. And you can see the count go up. So that way you can know if someone, ha if someone starts showing up in that uh, view, then you might know that they potentially locked themselves without an ES or forgot their password and you can intervene. So. Now, you can also do this with your own metadata because, as we mentioned, one of the, and I'm probably going to go way over today. Uh, if anyone does need to drop off, we'll have a recording on this on YouTube. Um, I think I might be another 20 minutes. I'm going to try to keep it as quick as I can, but there's a lot I want to get in for an introductory webinar. So, Now, as I mentioned, there are limitations with uh, the indexes that Glean gives you just based off necessity and what information they had available. Uh, when they set this up. Uh, as uh, we got a question earlier asking if the object index offered a current snapshot of the state of the system, uh, it does. And that's one way you can cheat around this is if you have information that's not available, uh, you can write it into metadata that is then available uh, in uh, search. So for example, I have in my workflow here, What I did here was a very kind of nitpicky example. I went through in every step in this workflow, and I added my own little pieces of information that I thought I could make use of later on. So at every point in this workflow, pretty much between every uh, step, I have a custom link in here that's setting uh, a percentage status of how far I am in the workflow. Uh, and I'm also recording the status of the file in the workflow so that I have that available in Elasticsearch. So you know, if you go to the next step, or go to a future step, you can see that they all have uh, that status in here. I did also a few other tweaks in here as well. Uh, there's one in here where uh, if my file goes for uh, pre-flight in twist, and it comes back, I check to see if the pre-flight result was good or bad. And depending on whether it was or not, I set a has pre-flight error variable that I can then use to see which files have pre-flight issues. Uh, and I also have one final one in here, is delivered true, uh, so that if I want to see which files are actually done in the process, I can. Uh, this information is set up under customization metadata sets. If I go in here, I have my uh, demo printer. Um, all my fields are set up in here, so percentages of number. I have a few of these are booleans, which are checkboxes. Uh, and these are all set as searchable, which is important because ES only feeds searchable fields into that object index. Um, so if you had a, for example, Wiffle status didn't have searchable enabled, that would never get fed into Elasticsearch and wouldn't be available to use in a visualization. Uh, there are also two other things you can be mindful of here. Is, for example, if you add a new field in here, you usually have to recop, you have to re-index that uh, data into Elasticsearch, um, so that, uh, for example, if you change this and you decide to suddenly make workflow status available for search, uh, Elasticsearch isn't going to have those records for old files. So what you need to do then is go into System Tools uh, and then go to System Configuration, 
and then hit re-index the search database in here. And I'm not actually going to do that because that would take a while, but uh, what that'll do is that'll have ES will look at all the info it needs for search and it'll repopulate that into Elasticsearch clean. So, just, just a um, clarification on that. So if you create a new one that you just started using, you don't have to re-index, right? It's only if you had it, it wasn't sent to searchable, and you add it as searchable. Is that correct? I think that's correct. Uh, it's one thing you can always check in Elasticsearch to see if uh, something doesn't show up in here. But that's that's the case where I think you'd most likely have to re-index. Uh, the yes. other thing you have to check up... Because there's a caveat that that, that re-index... If you have a large ES, could take a, a long time. Yeah, that's a, if that's something you need to do, we can talk about that later as a technical conversation because that can take a few days. Uh, yes. So and I think you won't I think be able to do searches while it's going, or you'll only be able to do searches on what it's re-indexed at that time. So your searches yeah. will not be accurate. Yeah, because it basically deletes everything out of Elasticsearch and repopulates it from scratch. Uh, Elasticsearch is really meant as a search engine, so it's not. It, it, it can be configured to be quite redundant, but it's not built as a intended long-term primary store for data. So uh, what I can do here is go to, uh, the other thing you have to keep in mind with this is I think if you added a new field in the ES and made it searchable from the get-go, uh, you have to go into index patterns in the management area. And then you'd go into the ES object index and you have to click this refresh field list option in here. And what that's going to do is, because this only, this doesn't look for new fields until you tell it to. And then it'll check with Elasticsearch and uh, add any of those new fields into Kibana and make them available for reporting. So I think if you add a new field, a new piece of metadata in ES that you want to use in search, um, if it's brand new, make sure it's searchable first off before you use it. Uh, then when you use it, go in here, refresh the field list. Uh, and then go into Discover and make sure if you search for one of your pages that it actually does show up in uh, the file metadata in the object index. And if it does, then you're great. You can just use it. If not, then uh, you'd probably have to go through and do a re-index, which, as Fred mentioned, can take a few days and is usually best left for the weekend. So as far as I have a few custom fields in here, as I showed you. I'm going to make a few very quick visualizations with those, and then we'll gloss over some of the uh, flashy stuff. So, as far as a simple one, uh, I have a field where I was calculating the workflow percentage at every step I was writing that into the file. Uh, what we'll do is we'll create a, a, a goal. We're going to take this from the object index. It's from my... Uh, where do here is... Uh, Actually, do an average, and the field we're going to do this for is uh, my demo printer wiffle percent, and we're going to set the range for this goal from zero to one hundred because I'm writing this as a uh, percentage, and we can see that the average for my uh, everything in the system right now is eighty-five percent. So I have a nice little visual I could use on a dashboard, for example. So and if I filter that based on, for example. Uh, Customer name is uh, a track collectors monthly. You'll see that that percentage changes because their pages were further ahead in the workflow. But uh, I'll save that as uh, workflow status gauge. Now, yeah, the one last example I think was. Uh, and I'm going to do this in, uh, there's a different way you can create visualizations in Kibana 7. I wanted to show the core way first, but as far as new features, uh, in, in the old ones you had to go in and you had to select a visualization type uh, before you could do anything else. And then you were locked to that visualization type once you chose it. Uh, Kibana 7 has a new feature called Lens, which I'm actually really liking. Uh, so what you do in here is uh, you could say that... Uh, for x-axis here, maybe we want to, uh, want to limit this to type is page order. I should do this with the uh, object index. Type is page order. And we're going to do uh, the 
demo printer has preflight error is true. I will make the uh, y-axis account those results. So we have 35 files with preflight errors. Now, if we want to uh, break those down, we can uh, split them by uh, customer name. And we can break down by uh, job name. I think I might need to, uh, as I get horribly lost here. Yep, there we go. So we can see the breakdown of which customers have the most pre-flight errors on my system and which specific projects have the most. Uh, what's really cool with the lens is setup is that you can change that on the fly to be a different type of graph. So if you decide all of a sudden, no, I really want that to be a pie chart or I want to see what that looks like, uh, you can try toggling it between these different uh, setups uh, however you want. And uh, you can even change some of the specifics of, for example, a bar chart uh, on the fly if you want to try a different uh, view. So I want to see rather than a stacked bar, I could change it to a uh, other type of bar chart like that. I like the stacked bar there, so let me do that. my last visualization. So the next thing would be creating a uh, dashboard so that we can make use of these. So as far as visualizations, what we'll do is uh, we're going to go ahead in here and create a new visualization. Actually, not a visualization. I mean a dashboard. So. in here. I think I should do it. That's what I'm doing wrong. I gotta move back here. Create a new dashboard. And then we can take our uh, visualizations and we can uh, drag them and drop them into here. So what other ones do we have that we're good? And you can take these and you can resize them to whatever uh, size you want. I'm not much of a designer here, but uh, as far as the general gist, I get rid of this one. Go ahead and I'll save that. Now if I go to uh, my ES server, and I go back to the statistics page, I should be able to uh, see that in my uh, list here. And I would, uh, I could filter on uh, whatever time period I wanted to in here to see uh, what results I got. So uh, if you wanted to make that available from there to a customer, what you could do is under customization, if you go to smart views, you make a new smart view, uh, you have an option here, uh, statistics. And what this will do is let you choose from your list of dashboards. I guess I want this to refresh every uh, 10 seconds. I want them to be able to see hierarchy, and I want them to be able to select metadata so they can control filters.
If I were to go over here, I can see my uh, I can see my uh, dashboard in here, and uh, these filters control what shows at this end. Uh, the one thing you'd be really cautious with here is uh, if you're not doing any sort of filtering like this. Uh, ESO setup in Kibana is full admin to Kibana, so uh, these these dashboards can show everything system wide. If you're in a case where you have shared tenants on your system, uh, it's generally a good idea to build these visualizations for them, so that it's only going to show their files, and you know you're not going to get someone else's in there. Uh, if you include filters like this, that could help, but uh, this isn't going to, by default, look at the user's permissions uh, within ES. I don't think. So that's one thing to be cautious of. Uh, I think that also applies actually to the filters in here. If you wanted to go in, they can see all the metadata in the system. Uh, I don't think older versions of Kibana showed that. So I'm one thing I got to do on the side is look at if there's a way I can hide that. Uh, I think you might be able to if you make Kibana ES use a special login to Kibana and then hide those filter options from that login. Uh, that's something, if that's something you're worried about, we can have a separate conversation about that. Just open up a ticket. So, Got a question that just came in. So if you wanted to find how many files hit a status in the past, how would you do that? Example, you want to see how many files needed alterations for a job work last week. Is past status stored for Kibana? Past status is stored for Kibana for the log index. So if I go to discover here, So there's two ways you could do that is if you had your status in here as a uh, let's turn on uh, operation or show was the uh, my workflow there was a uh, status earlier so yeah for example I have uh, I think the milestones will show up in here if I have a yeah, here's a uh, prepress waiting for approval milestone in my workflow or you could even do preview generation if you wanted uh I can see how many files hit preview generation on my uh, ES. And I could see all the file names too. So these are all the files yeah. that hit preview generation. And if you do that in a, in a report or anything, you could filter it by file name and see how many times that specific file name hit that same milestone. Um, there's also other ways to do stuff like that. Where if you plan it out, if you know for there's information you're always going to want, Alice's example earlier about adding metadata to your workflow that writes into the object itself is a good way to go because uh, you can update that metadata as you go. It can do a plus one, um, you know, so you have very specific information to look through instead of dig digging through log type information. Yeah, because the example here is if in my workflow I have at the very end, I have a uh, is delivered true metadata I put in for this file. So if I do, uh, so anything that has that metadata property, I gotta put a star after that. It's gonna show me anything that has this metadata property now. And I have to find it in the giant list. So is delivered is true. Actually, I'll put that in the. Uh... Yeah, you can see that if I remove that filter now, not everything in my system has that set, but that would tell me any files I had in my system that uh, hit that point in the workflow. So you could put a flag in, like Fred said. So those are your two options, I think. It's, it's definitely what we try to do in our workflows when we build them. Is you know any information that we're looking for to to build reports, we write into metadata even date stamps, things like that, we write in so we have, you know, exactly what we want, not trying to figure it out on, you know, after the fact. Yeah, because that's the, that's the big challenge is the two different indexes and the way this is set up is, it's, I don't want to complain because it's good we have the info. It's one of those challenges if we had the info available and we made it available or duly made it available to people, but it's functional information as it was 
because ES needed this for search, so it's optimized towards search, for example, and uh, the setup isn't always optimal for reporting. That's just kind of the icing on the cake, as it were. So, but you can cheat around it that way. If you were really, really uh, into this, you can you can actually create your own at Nexus and Elasticsearch and store info in any way you want. Uh, that's a little more technically involved, but it is possible to write your own indexes that has whatever info you want to. So if you're worried, for example, about info being removed from the object index when a file is deleted. But uh, that's the core of the webinar. There are a few features that are new to Elasticsearch 6 and 7. I want to show uh, very quickly. I'll just breeze through a few of these. Or I don't want to go into too many of the technical details uh, in an introductory that's webinar, but I want to. Yeah. I do want to show them though because they're okay. they're worthwhile to be aware of. So the first is, and this is one I'm still wrapping my head around, is canvases. So in previously, the dashboards are more kind of geared towards screen usage where you're looking at something on a monitor. Uh, canvases are more, they're built for either presentations or print reporting. Uh, so they're a little more graphical layout of uh, information. So if I were to create, for example, a work pad in here, I can choose, uh, let me hide this so I can see it all. I can choose what it is. So it might be if I'm giving a presentation to my boss or something, I can choose to have it be 720p so that it's going to sit on a uh, monitor in the office. Uh, or I can choose to make it U.S. letter if I want to do a print report. Uh, and then from there, I can uh, drag and drop in uh, whatever elements I want. So if I'm doing the print one, I can click Add Element. I can put actually, let me put a, an image in here, like a logo. I can uh, upload an image. Actually, that's enough. That was from my other example, which is why the logo is white. It's not going to show up great here, but I think there was a way you could actually change the font and stuff too. But then you can go in and you can add in, uh, for example, uh, charts. They tend to load in here with sample data so you can see what they're doing. And then you can plug in your own visualizations later. So you can have like a chart there and that sort of thing. Uh, where it gets a little trickier is uh, it uses a completely different method of connecting data, which is why I don't want to focus too much on it, but if you wanted to pull in uh, pull in data, you have to make like a sort of fake SQL query to query your index and then pull data in that way. So it, it works differently, but uh, but yeah. you can calculate things like so. I'm not going to focus on the technical details, but it's, it is a thing that exists. I'll show you the two examples I was playing with uh, earlier. Uh, one of these was like a print example where I was trying to build a test report. So you can see you got your header, you got your charts, you can put things wherever. Uh, one other second example I was working on with, uh, was, uh, can I zoom out maybe? I was trying to do like a screen report for a uh, like a business meeting. If you had something on like the screen while you're giving a presentation, you could have this as like a dashboard so that you know if uh, something went horribly wrong with file processing and suddenly a customer got like 20 or 30 pre-flight report issues or errors in the last hour, you can kind of have your uh, status heads up display here. So uh, the two other things uh, I'll show real quick are uh, uh, new, these aren't quite new in seven, I think they're new in six. Uh, the ability to use what uh, Elastic calls beats. They have these little tiny plugins you can install that collect information for you from different things you already have. Uh, the two I have set up in my system here are, are file beat and metric beat. Uh, file beat is used to grab information from files on your server. Uh, so in my case, if I'm doing ES, if you've ever done any debugging or troubleshooting, you've had to deal with the dreaded uh, Catalina.out uh, that Tomcat uses. 
so what I have here set up is uh, on my server, I actually pulled up my server. I did like a, uh, I have my uh, ES configured to uh, watch this file for updates. This is where ES writes any issues you might encounter. And I can stream that, that log real time and uh, let me move this bigger again. And so if anything happens, so for example, I go into my uh, ES and uh, turn the logging up uh, to super verbose. So I said it's like fine. Then we should see this uh, log file start flying when I do things in the system. Jump to most recent entries. But yeah, it's a way that you can view these log files on the fly. Uh, so you don't actually have to go to the server, and you can have you can have, for example, if you have a distributed ES install, you can have the logs uh, feed into this from multiple servers, uh, so you can view them in one place. Uh, the one other thing in here I was going to show real quick is I have Metric Beat installed on here, and uh, this basically shows me it keeps track of all the system health of my the computer that's running my ES. So I can see in here that uh, if I click on this, I can see. Uh, for example, uptime, I can see how much RAM and CPU is being used on my server and uh, filter that based on whatever time period I want to. So if you already have Kibana and Elasticsearch installed on your ES server, uh, because ES needs Elasticsearch, you can use that to also monitor your server's health. So you don't have to run around and top all the time. And that data gets stored Oh, so sorry? back in Elasticsearch 6 or Kibana 6, I mean 5, I'm sorry, this, this all used to be paid features that they've actually opened up free in later versions. Yeah. They, uh, but these, they also, the information those are recording gets logged into uh, indices of its own. So if you want to use that and create visualizations of your own based on uh, Diagnostic info. This is grabbing about your server or log lines. You can then take that and run with that. But uh, it's pretty much everything I had for today. Are there any questions? I think we got most of. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, we got to them during, what, during the, the webinar itself. So I think we're good since we're uh, 17 minutes over. Yeah. Well, thank right. you for so, uh, sticking in, everyone. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Hopefully, we should be on time in May um, once I come up with what I'm going to cover. Um, so third week, uh, third Wednesday of May, we'll see y'all again. Y'all have a great week.